it's always been like in my mind having an outlet of my own creating my own platform even to this day like I want to be in a position where I can help others especially with music um there's a lot of people in my community as well who are interested in music or there's artists it's really hard for them to get on the platform just because where I'm from um San Bernardino there's not really there's no shine here there's no you know we don't get enough eyes here it's it's mostly out in LA and stuff like that so for me to have a platform where I can help even if it's just you know just a tiny bit of help I think it's it's better than than nothing Welcome back to the Career Therapy Podcast, where we explore the hidden side of modern work, help you turn procrastination into job search motivation, and teach you how to stress less, earn more, and find the roles that are right for you. My name is Martin McGovern, founder and lead coach at Career Therapy, and I'm excited to introduce our guest today. Please welcome Freddie Ayala to the podcast. Freddie is a job seeker currently looking for work in the music industry where he can leverage his background in social media, public relations, digital marketing, and content creation. Recently, Freddie shared a post on LinkedIn that caught my eye. In it, he said he was tired of all the rejections, so he started doing something that he genuinely enjoys as a project in order to stand out in his search. So in today's episode, we talk about the job search project he launched ways in which Freddie can improve his networking outreach, and how to finally stop asking for jobs and start providing value to the employer. Thank you for tuning in and supporting our show. If you enjoy this podcast, please leave us a review on iTunes to help feed the algorithm and share these conversations with more folks like you. Now grab a cup of coffee or tea and settle in for our conversation with Freddie. So Freddie, um, We've spoken before, but it's been a bit. So I was hoping to catch up a little and sort of see how things have been going with your job search. I know we got a lot of listeners who are seekers and uh, I don't know, maybe it'll be good to commiserate a little bit. What's what's the world like out there? Well, job searching has been pretty difficult, especially of being still in the, in the midst of a pandemic going on. Um, it's a lot of trying to connect with people either on LinkedIn or on Instagram as well. Uh, a lot of a lot of ghosting rather than hearing back from anything. And I, I, I personally would much rather receive a rejection than, you know, being ghost, ghosted just because it feels like, are they even looking at my application? Um, but I still try to just keep a positive mindset about it all and you know, I hope one day that the right fit will come yeah. for me. Um, but just, I I for sure have taken a little step back recently just because I feel like the first three months of post-graduation, I went full like head on applying and applying and applying. Um, and I'm not sure if that's because I was very intentional with my, with my applications. I wasn't just applying to anything that was open. I was applying to places that that I was a fan of, like I liked their work you know, already. Um, I had been following them for a while, so keeping up with them. Um, I kind of, I, I liked their mission um, of the company. So I was what very- What kind of very, companies? Um, a lot of, since I do want to work in the music space, um, I've applied to record labels. I've applied to uh, PR agencies, um, uh, like media outlets as well. So yeah, yeah, it's 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 definitely one of those industries that has a lot of mystique around it, right? There's a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of uh, you know when you're when you're on the outside looking in, it almost looks magical in some in some mm-hmm. ways. Um, yeah. What what have you sort of seen in your research of like the types of things that these companies are looking for? Uh, for sure, people who are who are doing something like by by themselves if that makes sense like if mm-hmm. whether you whether you run your own blog or have your own little media outlet i think a lot of these companies are, are looking for someone who's already putting the work in rather than just waiting to get you know hired um, i feel like a lot of these companies 
want to see what you're already doing so that they can bring you onto the team. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's pretty common in the entertainment world, especially mm-hmm. to, to almost want evidence that you can do the job before you can do the job. Yeah. Right. And it becomes that catch yeah. 22. It's like, well, let me do the job and I'll show you how you can do the job. And they're like, no, you build your own business basically. And then we'll maybe let you into ours. And <laughs> it's yeah. kind of interesting. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk with you today. Uh, you know, you had that great LinkedIn post recently, and I'll just quote it real quick. You said you got tired of all the rejections. So you started doing something you genuinely enjoy as a project. Uh, you said you're on the hunt for good music and have a passion for sharing it. And you recently created a bunch of Spotify playlists and, uh, you know, putting some music out there in, in a way that kind of connects you with this industry that you're interested in. So how did you come up with that idea? What's been the process of kind of leaning into what it is these companies want to see? Well, it's, it's always been like in my mind, having an outlet of my own, creating my own platform so that I can, I've, 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 even to this day, like I want to be in a position where I can help others. So if I, whenever, especially with music, um, there's a lot of people in my community as well who are interested in music or there's artists and then really, it's, it's really hard for them to get on the platform just because uh, where I'm from, um, San Bernardino, there's not really, there's no shine here. There's no, people don't, you know, we don't get enough eyes here. It's, it's mostly out in LA and stuff like that. So, so for me to have a platform where I can help, even if it's just, you know, just a tiny bit of help, I think it's, it's better than, than nothing. So that's where it started. And, um, for a while, I just kept putting it off. I kept putting it off just because I I was I think I was afraid more about like failing like okay what if I do it and nothing happens doesn't work out and to this day it, it's it's you know it, I just started it and I'm still trying to overcome those those fears um, but I I like to think of the bigger picture rather than like right now so I I like to think about it in a way that like okay I'm not doing this platform for validation from the people around me. I'm doing it so that, you know, either I can help those around me or I catch I, like I catch the eyes of a bigger company and and just see where it goes from there. Um, so I think that's what keeps me, you know, like not embarrassed to do this, especially because I recently on TikTok, I started putting my face in the videos, like making a little intro and then showing the artist. Um, I just uploaded my first one with my actual face in there. And it took a while to like be like, okay, like just do it, just post it. And so what if if people from, you know, the high school you went to see you or your friends see you like whatever, like it's, you're, you're not, nothing's going to happen. Like you're doing it because you want to show like the companies you want to work for that, that you're doing something. Yeah. Well, and that's, and that's really the fear, right? It's like the fear Mm -hmm. of people seeing it and putting yourself out in that vulnerable way. So give us a little breakdown of the project so we can picture it in Mm -hmm. our heads. And then I want to dig more into the, the mindset around it, the fear and how you overcame it. On TikTok, I, I have like a little series that I titled it artists you should be listening to right now um so it's more of like people can it's a place I feel like I want it to be a place where people can discover new artists um um, there's a lot of artists that are up and coming and um and yeah and from there I I like to you know I I thought of the idea of making playlists so that if people do like a certain type of of artist they can discover like some that are, are similar to those and that's where I combined you know I made I made playlists where they can find similar artists like that that's cool that's cool yeah. and um when you think about you know it's always good to get in the head of the person that you want to listen to it right so you talked mm-hmm. about like helping your community or helping people that are interested in this stuff when you think about putting these lists together what sort of user need are you keeping in mind like what it what is it that the listener wants to hear well I how would I explain it? I think so. I like to I I like to the music. The music I like 
I, I like for it to put me in a certain mood. Um, I like for it to be able to change my mood as well. So if, if, if I'm having like a bad day, I like for, for songs, certain type of songs to change that mood and so I can be much more uh, calm. And I think that's what goes, I really, I'm really intentional with the, with the songs I put in the playlist. Um, for example, I have a playlist called Feel Good Music. So each song in that playlist, I felt like it, it would put someone in, in that feel good state of mind, you know? Um, and what helped a lot was that each, each, of the, each song that I have in the playlist, especially for that one, for the feel good playlist, I personally experience like a moment where that song was playing and, and it, it brought back like nostalgic feelings. So, so yeah, that, that's what I, I for sure keep in mind when I'm making playlists. Um, I want the user and the listener to, to feel a certain type of way. Um, and for like, ex for example, um, I have a, a gym playlist where if you're in the gym, you wanna be more hyped or have like, you know, like more loud music, um, but yeah. Yeah, and that ties directly into the kind of work you wanna do because you wanna work in the music mm. industry in more of a marketing, maybe even mm. social media kind of a role, right? So what sort of roles are you looking at and how does this project play into the work you're doing in your job search? I'm really interested in working with, with um, obviously in marketing, uh, with, with artists especially, whether it's um, like at a record label or at a streaming service like Spotify, Apple Music. Um, you know, it's something I, I, I recently come across too is being a, a, a playlist cur uh, curator. I had no idea that was a, a career option, but it's really cool that, that, you know, that they can do stuff like that. Um, yeah, and it's, it's cool that like a lot of these roles you could do on your own right? Like mm -hmm. you don't have to wait for someone to hire you to build playlists. You don't have to wait for someone to, you know, give you a job in order to start marketing people. Like you uh, could reach out to musicians, you know, you could reach out to all sorts of people and be like, Hey, do you need help marketing your stuff? Do you need help mm -hmm. um, getting the word out and definitely overcoming those fears of, of, you know, posting stuff and putting your face on stuff will only be helpful in getting mm -hmm. more kind of, well-versed in that, in that space. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, when it comes to, you know, this industry, I do think it's such an interesting one, right? Cause there's so much noise and there's so much glitz and glamor that it's sort of hard to know where reality meets sort of the storytelling aspect of it. Right. And so yeah. when you're out there looking at these businesses, like is it just the big names or is it, are there a lot of like smaller businesses that you could be reaching out to? What sort of things are you seeing? It's been both, honestly. Um, but I have, I, when I look into bigger companies, uh, it's a little bit more intimidating. And I, I, I've also reached out to smaller companies because I feel like I've, I've had a better chance. Um, but even then, I, I, I still feel like having like the practice of like me doing my own thing was still it would just be beneficial whether I'm applying to a smaller company or, or a bigger one um I personally would would rather work for uh for uh I feel like a, a smaller company at first um as opposed to like like let's say like what's a big record label um Interscope Sure. or uh, capital record just because I feel like I would I would gain more hands-on experience and and um, be in a smaller team rather than you know a bigger team like for it being my first my first gig um but yeah yeah and these are really the things that we got to figure out as we're going through the job search right we have to figure out mm -hmm. like what are our preferences where would we want to end up all that different mm -hmm. kind of stuff and so you mentioned that there's a lot of ghosting happening in the job search right now. Uh -huh. And that is something that comes up every day when I'm talking with people. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot, a lot that goes into that concept. So what's been your experience with ghosting? I wonder if maybe we can dig into that a little bit and see 
see what, what we might be able to change or adjust in order to get better responses? Well, I, you know, applying, sending my application and then just not hearing anything back, like no emails, not even from like automatic, um, like what is the rejection yeah. thing or whatever, <laughs> just automatic rejected. Um, so I dealt with that. I've also dealt with sending emails like to like if I if I find the the department's like email the person who's like uh, head of the department I'll send them an email and I'll, I won't hear anything back also um, on LinkedIn as well sending uh, like uh, per, uh, DMs on LinkedIn um, I've also been ghosted like that <laughs> uh, but you know I don't I don't take it I don't take it to heart just because I know that for one, they probably, I'm not, I'm not the only person trying to email them. Um, two, it got to the point where I'm just like, okay, maybe I don't have a lot to offer right now, but that's why I started this project. Mm -hmm. Like maybe, maybe what I have on my resume isn't, isn't enough. And, and, and that's okay. Cause like I'll even, sometimes I'll, I'll stumble upon someone's someone's LinkedIn profile and they're about like my age and they're already doing what I, what I want to do. And I'll mm -hmm. look through their, and I'll look through their resume and their experience and they have all these internships and all this stuff. I'm like, Oh, wow. Like, like, dang, like, that's probably, you know, that's probably why they they are where they are. Um, so yeah, that's a really feel, feel this project as well as just having, having something else to talk about rather than, than the experience I gained um, being, you know, the social media manager at my, my university. Yeah. And that's huge, yeah. right? Because the interview is all about being able to tell good stories, being able to communicate, mm -hmm. not what you, you know, have done in the past necessarily, but what you're currently doing and what you could mm -hmm. do in the future, right? So the more time you spent building up your own projects, the more current stuff you have to talk about. And it's really interesting to dig into that networking side of things, like trying to get people on the phone, trying to get a hold of people, and almost even dig into the nuances of it to a pretty heavy degree. We don't typically go as deep into the nuances, but I think maybe this is an opportunity for us to do it here of like, what are you saying in those messages that you're sending out? Um, I'd love to just, I don't know if you have one that you could quickly pull up, or if you just remember a message you sent out recently what are some of the things that you're typically saying in that first message you send? Um, mm -hmm. Maybe there's some things we can do to improve your response rates. Yeah, let me actually, let, let me pull one up, an email really quick. So here's one for a PR agency. It's a fairly small PR agency, but they do have um, big name clients, uh, artists. So I reached out to the founder, actually, <laughs> to the founder on email. Um, nice. So I said, hi, hi, Lauren, I hope you had a great weekend. My name is Alfredo Ayala. I'm a recent public relations graduate from Cal State San Bernardino. I'm currently looking for internship oppor opportunities in the music industry. And um, your, your PR company caught my eye as a place where I could really gain ha hands-on experience. Because of my background and high interest in working with, in music, I'm writing to see if there are any open opportunities in the publicity and marketing sector. Uh, throughout my academic career, I was able to learn and practice the, the fundamentals of communication and public relations. I also gained marketing experience as I was my university student union social media manager for two years, where I tripled their following and largely incre increased their engagement. In addition, I established myself as a credible live music photographer as I cover several festivals and shows for online publications. I believe I would make an excellent addition to your team and we'll learn a lot from you in return. Please let me know if there are any opportunities open. I'd love to help out in any way. All right. So lots that we can dig into there, but what's your general thought on, you know, as you were putting this together, you know, um, what was going through your head? What were you hoping to hear back from this person? You know, reading, reading it back now, it's been, uh, I sent this over two months ago. Reading it back now, I feel like, one, I think I wrote too much. I think mm -hmm. it was a lot of um, a lot of this and that and this and that. 
where I talked about I was a PR major. Uh, I talked about how I was a manager, a, a social media manager, and then a photographer. Um, it's a lot of information. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But as far as far as what I wanted to hear back, um, just just either you know them being like yeah like like we are looking for interns um or what are you interested in doing uh or you know worst case scenario just just them um, just like no not at the moment but right. <laughs> well and and this is one of the issues that arises when we're kind of not clued into how networking works right mm -hmm. um so basically what you did there and this is it's it's almost like not even or it it makes perfect sense why you wrote a message like this you mm -hmm. just went through college college is all about like write long form hit the word count kind of stuff right yeah. it's all about yeah. saying everything all at once and it really yeah. doesn't have much of a focus on like the long game it's like mm -hmm. get the essay in and graduate right so mm -hmm. what ends up happening is we're trained to write these long winding things that are all about us Basically, what you mm -hmm. did there was you wrote a cover letter in your intro message. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at it from that perspective, it's like, oh, wait, maybe I need to parse this information out over a string of conversations. Maybe I need to build the relationship before I can ask for the opportunity. Maybe there's other ways to connect beyond just yeah. saying everything all at once. And that's, mm -hmm. that's one of the downfalls or the pit, the, the sort of stopping points of the interview process is we're sort of encouraged um, to talk only about ourselves and to say everything all at once. So mm -hmm. a lot of what you said in this intro was, I've done this, I want this, do you have an internship for me, right? Mm -hmm. When in reality, yeah. it should be the exact opposite of what you've done here. Mm -hmm. not, not as a slight to you, but just as like, this is like the behind the scenes, how it all, oh, yeah. how, yeah. how to actually think about the psychology of of the person you're writing to, right? We interrupt today's episode to let you know about Career Therapy's Unstuck Coaching Program. If you're feeling paralyzed by job search procrastination and unsure of what to do next in your career, we're here to help. Each month as a member, you will get access to two one-on-one -on -one coaching calls, unlimited virtual chat with your coach via Slack, invitations to bi-weekly group coaching sessions, and lifetime access to our eight-part job search curriculum. Want to take your search to the next level? Head over to careertherapy.com and schedule a free 15-minute consultation to chat with me today and see if coaching is right for you. Now back to our show. So yeah. if you think about it from a marketing perspective, we have to write these messages with the reader in mind. If you look at something like Nike, right? They don't say, hey, our shareholders are really excited about making more money this year would you please go to the store and buy some shoes to make our shareholders happy? Right. Hmm. They don't mm -hmm. do that because they know you don't care about the shareholders the same way yeah. a company doesn't care about us wanting a job or us wanting an internship. They're yeah. not giving us an internship to solve, solve our problem. They're giving us an internship to solve their problem. And so that's what we want to address in this message. Right. So what Nike really does is they say, are you wanting to go for a hike? Are you wanting to run farther or jump higher or whatever? And then if you say yes to that, then they go, here's our jumping shoe and our running shoe and our hiking shoe, right? For you, mm -hmm. for your problems. And we want to do the same thing to these companies. So mm -hmm. what we can do is we can say, hey, you know, Lauren or whoever it was, um, I've been looking through uh, or while let's, let's, the, the kind of basic template I use is like, while researching the music industry, your profile came up or mm -hmm. your business came up. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of setting the stage of how you came across them. So while I was doing research on the music industry, your profile came up and it looks like you're doing some fascinating things at this mm -hmm. company in this industry. I'd be curious to learn more about your work. Would you be open for a quick conversation? So super mm -hmm. short, make it about them and have a clear next step of what to do next. Hey, jump on a phone call. Because then in the phone mm -hmm. call, you could talk about how you just graduated and how you did social media for your school mm -hmm. and how you tripled the results and everything like that. Yeah. But if we try and say it all at once, 
we overwhelm the person and Mm -hmm. they just literally don't know how to reply. Like that person's probably not sitting there going like, oh, let me go to the job boards and see if I can find something (laughs) for this guy, right? They're probably going, oh my God, I'm late for a meeting. I've been up all night. I'm really Mm -hmm. tired. Like they're they're stressed out about their own stuff. So we got to kind of realize what state of mind they're in. And also Uh if the, you know, the CEO or whoever it is doesn't reach out, go down a rung, go to the, you know, director, the VP, the manager, the, the junior manager, you know, find the person yeah. that will respond. I'll pause there. What yeah. are your thoughts on that? I like, I really like, I think that's very, very helpful, extremely helpful. And you're right about them reading a message like that and just be like, okay, like, I don't care. You know, like, I don't care. I'm, I'm Not even, I don't health. care, but like, I don't have time. That's more yeah, so it. Exactly. It's like, it's like, oh, yeah. I mean, I might want to help this person, but I don't have time. Yeah. But if mm-hmm. you flatter them a little bit, they'll be like, oh, well, I want to feel flattered a little more. So <laughs> I have time, you know? Yeah. I like that though. It's, you know, uh, you're right about building the, trying to build the relationship first rather than, and just here's what I want. Um, but yeah. For sure. And then you can almost weave your project into it. Like, so that's entry level networking, messaging, setting up one-on-one meetings and things like that. Mm -hmm. But then there's the, you know, you keep going down that road and this is sort of the, the journey I went through too. It's like, start with professional organizations, then do one-on-ones, then get comfortable with one-on-ones, then lead groups. So I would start hosting my own events then eventually you get to a point where you're like, well, how can I connect with more people on a more regular basis? And, you know, the podcast has many reasons. There's many reasons why I do a podcast, but part of it is it's my kind of project that allows me to stay in touch with the community, coaches, Mm -hmm. therapists, job seekers in a much more informal, but also formal way, right? Mm -hmm. Like if I just said, Hey, you want to get on a call for an hour to a VP of some place? It's a little harder to get them on the phone than if they want to be on a podcast episode or something like that. Mm. Um, mm. But again, like these are, this is just one of many reasons to keep building your projects and keep putting yourself out there, right? Someone who yeah. is on the board of, you know, some music organization is going to have more opportunities to talk to people that work at these companies or someone who is mm-hmm. volunteering to host different cool events or in your case, building these playlists, or Mm -hmm. maybe you build playlists, like, and you you reach out to the local musicians you're putting on the playlist, and you talk to them Mm -hmm. a little bit and ask them who their managers are and who what companies Mm -hmm. they're working with and things like that. So you can almost leverage the project that you're building into your networking and into your sort of strategy beyond just I hope someone sees it to Mm -hmm. how can I utilize it as a vehicle to get more connections. What are your thoughts around that? I think it can it can be bigger than I than I expect it to be. I have to be in there for the long run rather than trying to think that it's going to something's going to happen in like 3 months or so. I think it's it's very important to 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 do to try something just because you know, I don't have I don't have a connection. I don't I don't have family a cousin an uncle or anything like that working at a major record label so you just you know I have to put twice as much work in but it's a win-win situation because even if I if nothing happens with it it's still my own little little project I, yeah. I can still do whatever I want with it you put it on your resume um, you can put it in exactly. you can talk about it in interviews for sure mm-hmm. for sure yeah and that's the thing like I know I love that you brought up like family ties because mm-hmm. I think that that's actually something people don't think about as much about how people get jobs, right? If you look at job boards, you know, you mentioned you're not hearing back from job boards. Typically for entry-level jobs, job boards have like a one to 4% response rate. So what that Mm -hmm. means is like every hundred you send in, you should expect to hear back from one to, you know, just a couple or a handful of them, right? And so the issue with that is that it's hard to send in a hundred applications via the internet into the black Mm -hmm. hole of the job boards. And so people get really burnt out really fast. Sort of what you mentioned you, the first three months out of school, it was like just going at it hard. And then you're like, I'm not hearing back from this stuff and you start to burn out and it starts to, so that's why we got to find these sustainable things like the project that you've built and launched to like 
stay engaged over longer periods of time and remember why you love music as well, right? You don't want to lose sight of that. And then um, this networking approach of like sending that message that we just talked about, re retooling it and sending it out, that gets about like a 40% response rate. Mm. And then, um, you know, the more engaging the thing is that you're doing, the higher the turnover or the higher the response is. And right. so one of my favorite examples of this, I was coaching someone once and they mentioned like, oh, I want to start getting involved with like um, uh, e-games, right? Um, am I saying that right? Esports. They want to get involved in esports. And they're like, well, there's no esports in my area. There's no like meetups or anything. So I was like, let's create a meetup, see what happens. So he created an esports meetup, like put it on meetup.com, like 40 people joined it because meetup.com shared it out with the community. And then because he had 40 people in the group, he goes, well, I guess I could reach out to some speakers and see if they'll speak. So he reached out to a VP at um, EA Sports and asked okay. if they wanted to speak at the event. And the VP couldn't do it, but he sent the director. And so the director okay. did it. Um, and then, so he puts on this event with these 40 people that like, you know, coding and esports and right. this person who works on the tech team at uh, EA Sports. And mm -hmm. then he's kind of that connecting tissue that brought it all together. And it ends mm -hmm. up being like, you know, they were talking internships by the end of the day, right? And so mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, of like putting yourself in these situations to make these contacts, because mm -hmm. a lot of times people do get jobs from family and friends and friends of friends mm -hmm. and things like that. I think 80% of jobs are found through like knowing someone who works at the company. And so if we don't have those family connections, how do we get to know people at the company? Well, we got to put ourselves in those situations to get to know those people. So I love that you're already starting to kind of put these pieces together and put yourself out there in that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, like, like you said, it's, it's more of like, what can I do for them rather than what can they do for me? Exactly. They want to know what, what I'm doing and what I can bring, what, what skills and, yeah. So what skills I can bring, you know? And that brings us to like, what is it that these companies are struggling with? Like, what are the core problems that they have? What do you think some, what do you think the typical problems that these companies have are on their marketing team, on their community engagement team? What do you think they're struggling with? I want to say, I, for sure, I feel like it's like not interacting enough with their with their fan base mm -hmm. uh, yeah just not connecting with them just not just not relating relating to them so engagement uh, yeah engagement for sure and engagement um, leads to what so let's say you're running a business and mm -hmm. you're able to hire someone to improve the engagement between your business and your consumers what would that do for your business it would bring more loyal loyal customers exactly it bring, it, it, build, it builds a community you know um with the with the when i was doing the social media for the student union at my school it went from being completely dead to to it being a becoming like a community it became it became a place for students where we're very comfortable with with sharing anything with us even if it was like personal stuff even I remember one day uh, uh, a student had tweeted at us and said oh I just got I just aced my my last final or something like that and and then other people sharing you know their their achievements um and I I, I really love that that they they looked at us as like a as like a just a, a safe environment like a community where we're students like we're all students there like why can't we all just get along and interact with each other you know yeah um and i feel like that that's what a lot of uh companies especially major like bigger record labels and stuff like that in the music industry they they really lack engagement um mm -hmm. they just post something and they, that's it they post and go and that's yeah it. post and ghost as they say mm -hmm. um yeah. and that's and that's kind of the thing right like so that story that you just told is is one that you definitely should note down and tell in an interview, right? Of like how you created this community that really helped people open up and engage and talk about things. And then you relate that back to the business's needs. It's not just that you did it, but it's that 
you know how to create spaces that foster that kind of conversation and community. And what that does for businesses, is it helps them better understand their consumers and basically do market research. It helps them retain customers over longer periods of times. Mm -hmm. And it helps them attract new customers because the word of mouth from all the community people talking will spread. And so mm -hmm. all of this becomes part of your value proposition in your job mm -hmm. search and in the way that you talk about and market yourself. And I think mm -hmm. that that's like such a big piece is like, how do you put yourself into it? How do you get into the conversations that are already happening? And how do you know, like, it's not, I'm going to get a job at this company because I hope to work there and they can help me. It's how do I get a job at this company so that I can help them? They're struggling to connect. They're struggling to grow their business. They're struggling to get people to listen to new music because of all the competing voices out there. How do I help them cut through the noise? And now you're coming in with a solutions focused value prop rather than a help me sort of value prop, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just, I'm just writing some stuff down. I'm glad you're writing it down, man. Hey, this is kind of turned into like a, a informal coaching call. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and so as you're thinking about, you know, next steps of where to take your project from here and how to put yourself out there more, um, does it bring up a lot of anxiety? Do you get nervous? Are you excited? What sort of feelings is it triggering? All of the above. Everything you <laughs> It's named uh definitely anxiety definitely fear um yeah like i said with the fear just 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 doing it you know it's or the fear of of people seeing people in my community seeing it like oh like what is he doing like you have know? you gotten um, any feedback like that has anyone ever said what are you doing i i haven't no and no negative feedback um it's the fear of also being in, in, in front of the camera. Um, I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not a natural being in front of the camera. So it's also getting out of that comfort zone as well. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but, you know, like, like I said, I just think, I just think of the bigger picture. I just think of, of where I can take this or where it can take me. Um, and also the reason I'm doing it. I'm not doing it just because, oh, I want to gain followers i want to you know i want to gain some fame like like i'm not doing it because of that I, I'm re just remembering that it's because i love music i love sharing music putting good music out in, in front and in, in front of people's more people's face you know um so yeah i think just remembering why the reason behind it and i think um, that's a perfect place for us to wrap up because that's what it is at the end of the day Focus on your enjoyment of sharing these ideas, sharing this music, mm -hmm. sharing these feelings that you want to have yeah. out in the world, and then try to talk to companies about how they're doing that same thing and how you can help. Mm -hmm. That's it. For sure. Yeah. It's a real and, simple and, equation. You know, like, even if this artist I'm sharing has millions of streams on the song, there is for sure one person in the world that still hasn't listened to that song, you know? Exactly. One more, one more fan is one more, one more listener. One exactly. More listener, one more, yeah. One more. They add up. Yeah. Exactly. I love it, man. So if anyone wants to follow along with what you're building, where should they go? Where should they find you on TikTok, on uh, Instagram? What, what should they look up? So my TikTok is musicheals.com xyz uh, my personal instagram is fred Ayala, and and there i have linked um my music heels instagram as well and hit them up on linkedin we'll put all the links below yeah freddie <laughs> thanks so much for joining us today thank you martin i appreciate it uh i've always this is the second second interview i had first one being gabe which was amazing and you know i oh i've a dream of mine that was always being on like on podcasts, on interviews, just to share what I know or or learn from the other person in return. So I thank you. I'm happy this. we could have made it happen. Thanks for joining us today. And, and it's also experience. It's also a lot. It of gives you practice. practice. Gives you a lot of practice. Exactly. That's that's another whole conversation we could have another day. Well, I, that's why that's why networking is so important because it's basically <laughs> yeah. interview practice, but low uh -huh. stakes. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I had an interview with Dolby um, and I experienced like, like panic attacks for the first time oh, ever. Wow. Yeah. I had never felt anything like that. And um, it was, it was uh, luckily everything went smooth through the whole interview. Um, it was a, it was a virtual one. And um, um, they didn't, I guess they didn't realize I was like low key panicking, but yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it was, it was, it was something new to me. I was like, well, what is going on? Like, I've never felt like this, even if I had school presentations or anything like that. Like I never felt that type of a sensation. So yeah, it's just putting it into practice, you know? Well, and that's the thing. It's a big name company with high stakes, right? So <laughs> yeah. that's what we got to talk to lots and lots of people to get comfortable uh -huh. so that when we get into that dream situation, we don't, you know, have too much of a panic attack. But to your point, they didn't even notice the number of times I'm having like full on panic breakdowns and people don't even know. Like, it's yeah. always so funny. Cause I look back on it and I'm like, that was terrible. And people go, what are you talking about? That was amazing. Like you did great. And so we always have to keep that kind of dual mind of like, I might be freaking out, but also people yeah. might not notice. Um, mm -hmm. So kudos for you to you for getting through that. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a process, a process of just like exposure therapy and putting yourself into these difficult situations so that next time it's not so hard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ah, what was it? Practice doesn't make perfect, but it prepares you, I think. Yeah, it's uh, I've always liked the phrase practice makes progress. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I, I forget. I forget exactly what I was going to say, but I like that. <laughs> Me too, my man. Well, I'll talk to you soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your day as well, Martin. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode today. I really appreciate your support of what we're building here at Career Therapy as we continue to try and explore the hidden side of modern work and tell some of the stories that maybe don't get enough light shed on them. If you enjoyed what you listened to today, I hope you will leave us a review on iTunes. Uh, subscribe to this wherever you're listening or watching on YouTube, Spotify, etc. And uh, share this with some friends who you know are going through similar experiences and looking to build their career and, and gain some insights along the way. Again, thank you so much for stopping by, and I wish you the best. I'll see you on the next episode.